But first, most Americans say social media is divisive and straight up waste, this, waste our time. But, well, let's face it, most of us use it every day. And we aren't willing to put down that device and disconnect. Joining me now to discuss the social media paradox is JMP Securities President Mark Lehman. Mark, uh, you know, we're, people will tweet today how much they hate tweeting or the folks on Twitter. What is it about this social media love-hate relationship? Well, it's, it's taken over our daily lives, and I think people look at that as a threat, but at the same time, they can't get enough of it. And I think we've been talking about this imminent threat um, for a long time to both adults and children, and I think we're getting more to what are we going to do about it, because it is here to stay. It isn't going away, and the usage is actually going up, and it's going up every day. It is going up every day, and, and there's been so many scandals, abuse of the, the, the information we share with these companies, the abuse of the information that we, we put on about our personal lives, uh, the abuse we take from other folks on these same platforms. Obviously, there's going to be some government intervention, but I got to tell you something. People are, are, are wanting even more than that. They think that, to your point, this is an avalanche that if we just stand there, it's, it's going to end really miserably for all of us. Well, I think it's like anything else. You're going to have great calls and great alarm bells ringing because there are some terrible byproducts of this, as we all know. On the other hand, this is how we live our lives, and the way we live our lives is only going to get more mobile, and it's, we're going to use more of these social media. And the proof is in the pudding, right? You're going to see Facebook report their first quarter. They're going to show advertising growth north of 25 percent. you got a half a billion daily average users on Instagram. you got a couple billion daily average users on Facebook. Those are daunting numbers, and they're just not going to go away by legislative means. They're going to go away by individual choices. But I just don't see governments going in and legislating what that looks like. And Zuckerberg kind of said that this week. You know, to, to, speaking of Zuckerberg and Facebook, it's got, it got two upgrades in the last week uh, after uh, uh, just tons of uh, downgrades going back to last July. Does Wall Street look at this more realistically than Main Street uh, in terms of, hey, you know what, it's going to be here, deal with it, and make money on it because it's not going away? I think they do. I, I mean, I think it's going back away from the Cambridge Analytica story of last summer and more towards usage story, daily average users, monthly average users, what kind of profits they're going to have when they report. You know, we're seeing more and more of that in the vernacular and less and less of, oh, my God, the government's going to come in and regulate what's going on here. And more portfolio managers, I think, are waking up to that fact. I think you also saw at the end of 2018 portfolio managers as a percentage of their holdings, Facebook was actually going down. And I think there's some people who have to get back into the stock. And that really right. hasn't been widely reported. The stock's up a lot this year. And part of that is, I think it, frankly, shockingly, was one of the more under-owned stock for some portfolios. And that's going to change. Well, if users can't give it up despite a love-hate relationship, maybe fund managers shouldn't either. Mark, thank you very much. Appreciate it.